Today, we're going to learn about operating leverage, what it means, why it's important, and what you can do to improve it. Before we begin, there are a few financial terms and concepts you should know about. Revenue, fixed cost, and variable cost. These three elements work together to produce operating income and operating leverage. Let's look at each of these a little more closely. Revenue is simply the number of units sold multiplied by the price per unit. Think of this jar as being filled with revenue. In this example, each sphere represents five units of product, and the size of each sphere represents the price. With this in mind, watch how revenue increases in the following three scenarios. In the first scenario, revenue increases when price increases and quantity remains the same. In the next scenario, the same amount of revenue is generated by increasing quantity while price remains the same. In the final scenario, revenue increases when price and quantity increase together. Fixed costs are costs that do not change based on the number of units sold. We can represent them as a solid layer in the jar. These include buildings, equipment, software, and other similar costs. Variable costs apply to each unit produced. The number of spheres in the jar matches the number of units sold. The size of each sphere represents the variable cost for each unit. These costs include materials, packaging, shipping, and other similar costs. The total cost of producing or distributing a product or service, also known as cost of goods sold, is the combination of total variable costs plus total fixed costs. Revenue, total variable cost, and total fixed cost interact resulting in operating income dollars. As costs increase, operating income dollars decrease. In other words, operating income dollars are equal to revenue minus total cost. So what does all of this have to do with operating leverage? Our finance team will fill you in on the details. Operating income dollars and all of the other elements we just reviewed are measured at a specific period of time. Making the correct business decisions often requires looking at how our business changes over time, also known as incremental change. We use a measure called operating leverage to compare these incremental changes over a minimum of two similar year-over-year -year periods. Operating leverage is the ratio or percentage of incremental operating income dollars and incremental revenue. What do we mean by incremental operating income dollars and incremental revenue? Consider the following example, where we sell twice as many units in year two as in year one. Operating income at this point is equal to revenue. As volume increase doubles our revenue, it also doubles our variable costs. Fixed costs are not directly affected by volume increases and are unchanged. As a result, we produce $100 in incremental revenue and, after deducting $55 in total cost, $45 of incremental operating income. Taking the ratio of incremental operating income dollars and incremental revenue over the two periods, we recognize 45% operating leverage. In other words, operating leverage is the measure of how efficiently we can turn an incremental dollar of revenue into incremental operating income. Our business goal is to attain 45% operating leverage, or 45 cents of incremental operating income, for every incremental dollar of revenue. So now that we know a little more about revenue, variable costs, and fixed costs, and how they affect operating income and operating leverage, let's see how we can apply specific levers to improve each element and create positive business impact. In your line or business function, these levers may include improving processes for front office, back office, manufacturing, and right-sizing cost structure. We can also apply levers to reduce product costs through engineering improvements or supplier pricing reductions. Lastly, we can address product pricing and margin leakage through top-line margin expansion. To understand each of these levers better, let's imagine Ingersoll Rand is targeting a new emerging market. After the NASA rover discovered life on Mars, we learned the Martians needed a wide range of solutions. Our product development teams began working with the Martians to develop a profitable and sustainable market. To keep things simple, the teams decided to initially focus on one product line. Current sales for this product on Earth are 10,000 units a year, at $100 per unit generating revenues of $1 million. Fixed manufacturing costs and selling and administration support costs 
total $300,000, with variable costs like materials, contract labor, and outbound freight totaling $600,000, we calculate variable cost per unit at $60. Combined variable and fixed costs set the current total cost at $900,000. In summary, with total revenue of $1 million less total cost of $900,000, the operating income for the period is $100,000. Now, let's look at the opportunity on Mars. While maintaining sales volume and price on Earth, the team decides to improve the efficiency of its current manufacturing processes to increase the capacity of the plant, currently at 10,000 units per year, in preparation for demand from this new market. Based on these process improvements, which required no incremental investment in fixed costs, the operations team estimates the new output potential at an additional 20% or up to 2,000 units per year. This is called cycle improvement, doing more work with the same amount of cost a critical part of what our value stream work is all about. With manufacturing ready, the sales team works with the Martians and forecasts initial sales of 1,000 units on Mars, well within the new production capacity. Now, let's think for a moment. Based upon what we have previously reviewed, what are all of the components needed to help us calculate operating leverage? And do we have all of these components? Let's check. Variable cost per unit remains at $60 per unit, setting the total variable cost of the Mars products at $60,000, and increasing the total cost for year two to $660,000. No additional investments were required, therefore no additional fixed costs. So yes, incremental sales to Mars of $100,000 less $60,000 in variable cost with no additional fixed cost produces $40,000 incremental operating income. The ratio of operating income dollars to revenue equals 40% operating leverage. To enable us to get product to our new customer efficiently, the management team secures a large rocket with expanded payload capacity, resulting in significant increase to the variable outbound freight cost of $17 per unit to ship our product to Mars. How does this variable cost per unit increase impact operating leverage? The variable outbound freight cost of $17 per unit raises our variable cost for Mars from $60 per unit to $77 per unit, increasing our incremental variable cost to $77,000. Operating leverage is all about incremental change. In this case, incremental revenue remains unchanged at $100,000, increasing incremental variable cost, increases incremental total cost, and decreases incremental operating income to $23,000. $23,000 is a much smaller percentage of total revenue than the previous $40,000 and reduces operating leverage to 23%. Remember, our goal is 45% operating leverage. What other levers can we apply to increase our operating leverage from 23% to 45%? The Top Line Margin Expansion Lever, or TLME, allows us to adjust pricing to reflect product value. Using customer survey data accumulated through an interplanetary link call, the sales team applies TLME techniques and determines the value of our products to Martians to be 17% greater than their value to Earthlings. With this information, the team determines we can increase the price of the Mars solution to $117 per unit. How does this change in price impact operating leverage? In addition to matching price to value, the price increase is accomplished using the same production facilities and equipment, resulting in zero incremental fixed costs. Since increasing price does not increase volume, Mars variable costs remain constant at $77 per unit. This price change increases our incremental revenue to $117,000 and improves our operating leverage from 23% to 34%. However, these gains are below our target of 45%. As you can see, increasing price, while all other elements remain the same, increases operating leverage. We need a way to make this price change generate more revenue. What other adjustments should we try? Our initial product marketing is a huge success on Mars, creating a 50% increase in demand over our first shipment. 500 additional units increase our total production to 11,500, well within our total production capacity of 12,000 units. 
However, our back office functions cannot process the additional volume as efficiently as it did before. Therefore, we need to invest in an incremental $10,000 in fixed overhead to meet this additional demand. How do these two changes impact operating leverage? Our variable cost remains constant at $77 per unit. However, due to the increase in volume, incremental variable costs increase from $77,000 to $115,500. Remember, we also invested an incremental $10,000 in back office support, resulting in increased fixed overhead and total incremental cost of $125,500. So even though total revenue increased to $175,500, operating leverage decreased due to fixed cost investment, with a net result of $50,000 in operating income dollars and operating leverage of 28%. Let's look at some of the areas impacted by our new market to determine the next lever we should apply. For example, is there anything we can do to reduce the increase in outbound freight cost? As we noted earlier, Delivery to Mars introduces increased costs to shipping because of space considerations for Earth-style packaging. Given this challenge, our team uses Value Analysis Value Engineering, or VAVE, to address the variable outbound freight cost. Working together, they improve the product packaging for the unique requirements of Mars and reduce the size and cost of the delivery ship. How does reducing the shipping cost per unit to Mars affect operating leverage? Applying VAVE reduces the variable cost on our Mars shipment from $77 per unit to $70 per unit, incremental variable cost to $105,000, and total incremental cost to $115,000, improving operating leverage to 34%. Still not reaching our target operating leverage percentage, the team identifies other improvement opportunities. Using value stream mapping, our team reduces fixed cost by uncovering process changes that apply back office lean methodologies to improve quote to cash cycle time. How does this fixed cost reduction affect operating leverage? This cost reduction allows the business to reduce earlier incremental investments in fixed cost and increase operating income dollars to $68,000. Operating leverage is now 38.75%, approaching our target of 45%. We are so close. Let's review the numbers and see if there are any levers left that can help us reach our goal. We adjusted price and volume to increase our revenue. We applied VAVE to improve packaging and to optimize variable outbound freight costs to Mars. We applied back office lean methodologies to minimize incremental back office investments. What other lever can we apply to increase our operating leverage? Another variable cost relating to the manufacture of our product is direct material cost. The team works with our global procurement experts to negotiate a $1 per unit reduction in the direct material costs of the product. How does this cost per unit reduction affect operating leverage? This cost reduction decreases the earth variable cost per unit from $60 per unit to $59 per unit and $70 per unit to $69 per unit for products sold on Mars. Note this reduction does not impact the additional $10 freight charge for Mars reflected in the cost of $69 per unit. The $1 per unit change results in an overall variable cost improvement of $11,500, reducing incremental variable costs to $93,500, and total cost to $96,000 while increasing our operating income dollars to $79,500. This combination improves our operating leverage and meets our target of 45%, maximizing the value of our solution. The success of the team in our scenario resulted from using value stream work in the plant to increase manufacturing capacity while applying TLME to gain more value per unit and VAVE to reduce freight cost and reduce the need for incremental back office investment. Combined with productivity gains through improvements in purchasing, they met our operating leverage target of 45%. In this hypothetical scenario, we demonstrated how we can drive profitable growth by managing the levers of operating leverage. Take what you have learned today and look for opportunities to work with your teams and apply these levers to improve business results.